Okay, yes, we're glad to know that you're still there. Um, we've heard that Nigeria has the highest burden of children born with uh, HIV. And uh, to discuss that with us, uh, we have uh, Dr. Nuru, Nura Umaru uh, joining us uh, this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program, Dr. Umaru. Can you hear me, doctor? Maybe you're on mute. I can't hear you. Please unmute yourself. I heard you earlier, but I can't hear you now. Good yeah. morning. I'm good glad morning. to be here. Oh, good morning. I can hear you now. Uh, this is quite worrisome uh, that uh, we have the highest number of uh, uh, children born with HIV AIDS. Uh, let's just look at the statistics before we go to the, uh, the cause of this um, number being that high. Okay, uh, good morning, viewers. The statistic is actually staggering. Yeah. And in a country that has around 1.9 million people living with HIV, and majority of these individuals that are affected are women, uh, especially those living in the rural areas. And most of these individuals that have uh, HIV are usually girls within the young age bracket and uh, in a country of our population it is worrying and uh, it is something that we need to look into and some of the things that can be attributed to it are one is the accessibility to the healthcare, especially during the perinatal time and also the our ability to intensify on the prevention of maternal to child transmission of the HIV infection itself. Therefore, when you look at the statistics relative to other countries such as Cuba and other developed countries, we are far, far left behind in terms of the detection and also implementing the needed goals that is required to prevent this transmission. Hmm. Okay, but you're, you're, who can drive the process that will make us get out of that uh, uh, situation right now? Because like you mentioned, uh, there are some things that can be done and uh, from mother to child transmission will be prevented. So what are these things that we need to do? Who needs to drive this process to make sure that this happens? Yeah, when you look at it statistically, it is like six out of ten of the people living with HIV are women. And uh, to drive this process is best to come down on, the, on these vulnerable individuals. And the only way we can do it is we need a collaborative engagement involving the traditional uh, rulers, government itself, and then awareness through either social media or other outlets that we can reach to the public. First of all is if we can target a situation where people cannot even get infected, that will be better. But when you look at how human beings uh, relate within the community, sometimes targeting that is almost practically impossible. And then two is when we bring in the traditional rulers, it's not only to inform them about the scope or the meanness of HIV. It's about them getting informed from professionals that have been in the field and that are well knowledgeable to let them know how dangerous these things can be. And one of the things we can do is inviting them, educating them, and equipping them with the right knowledge. Then we can also involve the spiritual leaders. Because when you look at most of our marriages and ceremonies are being conducted in God's houses, either the mosques or the churches. So these institutions have a vital role to play toward educating the populace. Because we all know that most of this engagement happens within our vicinity and in the community. And without involving most of the key players, we cannot terminate this scourge. And then thirdly, is equipping the health personnel himself with the right knowledge and the right tools. When we say the right knowledge, it means that the healthcare personnel need to be trained and retrained on how to engage the community, 
Two, how to even engage the people that are vulnerable to it. And three, how to have sound knowledge and equipment that is needed to detect these things. And all this will come surrounding the women because they are the one that bears the pregnancy that eventually will lead to the children coming out. And then when you attack from that end, you have a situation whereby two things will happen. One is if you detect, then you can start treatment there. We seem to be having problems with uh, Dr. Omar's audio. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, the network is, uh, seems to be uh, very, very unfriendly this morning uh, to him because uh, the former guest was uh, really loud and clear. We do hope that he can rejoin us on time to say what he needed to say. But it's really worrisome that they are um, the number of people or children living with HIV AIDS that had it transmitted to them from their parents is highest in Nigeria in the entire world. Nigeria may not be the country with the highest number of HIV and AIDS um, uh, patients, but uh, it so happens that the children born uh, with it are more in Nigeria and something needs to be done. So I was asking Dr. Nura Omaru uh, what gave rise to this and what can be done about it. And he was trying to answer that when we lost his audio. We do hope that he will join us um, soon. When he does join us, I would also like to know what they are doing, uh, especially in terms of accessibility, because sometimes to educate somebody is one thing, but having that person having access to what you have educated them that they need to do uh, is a, another thing. What I mean is not in the preventive uh, uh, aspect of it. In the preventive aspect, you can go to villages and you can tell them, you can engage the... Um, traditional rulers, uh, the, the faith uh, molders and leaders in every community and all that, the, the imams and the pastors and the priests and all. But what if the deed has been done and someone comes down with HIV? Uh, how accessible is uh, the, the medication to this person? In some villages, it takes you up to like three hours to get to the local government headquarters, which is usually like where these things reside. Uh, that you want to access uh, treatment, you want to get the drugs and all that, you need to go from a village of three hours. And to go from a village that will take you three hours to the center where you're going to access this, it will mean that you'll pay through the nose. So how many people from villages that come down with this can afford going to these places to get medication? Uh, you, you might say uh, life is so important that you have to make an effort to do that, but hey, that means you don't know the reality in some of these villages and what people face out there. There are some people who are finding it difficult to even feed themselves, even in the villages, even though we, we think that in the villages there are there is so much food, they, everything is very, very easy. Yeah, there could be so much food, but you know, you don't always cook yam every day to eat. You don't always cook, um, drink gari because you have cassava in your farm. You don't always eat only vegetables because you can find them. What is the protein that you have? What, is, uh, what are the requirements that you have to call it a balanced diet and all? So people are suffering in cities or in the villages. Everywhere people are suffering. And if they are suffering, can you ask them to go to get this medication? So I was going to ask the doctor, uh, I don't know. Doctor, are you back with us? Y yes, I'm back with you. Okay, so let me just ask you the question, you know, because I was saying, if you give the people the information, it's a good thing. You can go to everywhere and give this information. But what about if the deed has been done and they have come down with HIV? What plans uh, are put in place or are being made to make sure that this medication gets to the rural areas that may not be able to get to the city centers where they can um, access this. Because my, in my, in my um, experience, I see that uh, HIV uh, medication is usually, let's say, in the local government headquarters or in the zonal headquarters or in the state headquarters and all that. So what is being done to make sure that it trickles down to the villages? Yes, uh, that is another challenge altogether, the accessibility to drugs. Unfortunately, we cannot at this point in time in the country say that 
all villages or hamlets have access to the drugs. As you rightly said, most of the accessibility to drugs are either within the local government capitals or other uh, urban places, which based on the accessibility, either due to poor road network or one reason or the other, or the economic situation, most of the people in the villages and hamlets may not have access to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are right. And I believe that the National Agency for the Control of Health is doing something with respect to that regard. But when you look at it, the way we live in a community, access to local government headquarters is usually not too distant from most of the villages. So I believe that with the right advocacy and the right engagement, especially with the community stakeholders, once the community is informed, they should be able to access that. And then this brings us to another conundrum, which is the economic situation. Would they have the economic strength to shoulder the responsibility of transporting themselves from their villages to where they can have access to care? That is another question that needs to be asked. And I believe that the National Agency for the Control of Aid should have a mechanism put in place whereby the detection will be at the grassroots level. And then that detection should be done by qualified health personnel in order for those individuals that are positive to assess care. Because when you look at it, even at our level of education is a bit low in the villages and other places. Mm. And once the level of education is low, the awareness becomes a different thing altogether. And when you, look, you have to also look at our health seeking behavior. Our health seeking behavior is we always go for the easiest and the cheapest. And you and I know what is the easiest and the cheapest, where even some investigation cannot be conducted, where some things cannot go through the, uh, the, uh, the uh, modern medical and technological advancement to detect diseases. So they are all abound everywhere. And they have been laying claims to either cure or treatment of this HIV infection. So we need to sensitize the problem. The community engagement is very important. <clears throat> the religious leaders need to come into this and at the same time, other stakeholders, you also in the, in the media have a vital role to play. Because at this point in time, I think most of the villages have access to most of the programs being carried out in either radio stations or television. And with the internet that is almost everywhere, I believe that you also have a vital role to play. Okay, uh, let me digress as we are we're wrapping up this, uh, uh, this section of the program and even in the entire program you are uh, chairman of the uh, young doctors affairs of nigerian medical association just tell us a little bit about that and what your group is passionate about how do you intend to change the trajectory of medicine in nigeria for instance if that's what you're doing okay uh, young doctors are all those doctors that are within certain age bracket by age and then Within also the professional qualification, we can also have young doctors. Especially no matter how your age is, if you are undergoing training, we regard you as young doctors. So it's not always by age. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is to raise awareness within the community. And part of it is to bring all stakeholders and let us all educate young people on the need for us to come together collaborate in order to advance the healthcare system of the country. Mm. And with respect to the topic that we are uh, talking about now, it's all about educating, enlightening, and making sure that individuals, especially girls within the reproductive age, have access to HIV uh, treatment so that we can prevent the maternal to child transmission of the infection. Okay. How close are we to getting a cure to this HIV AIDS? Well, Glo I can globally. say so far, so far and so close. What is known is that for HIV, the, the, the target is viral suppression. And by viral suppression means that an individual that is virally suppressed has lesser chance of transmitting the infection to his partner. Okay? And then in terms of cure, a lot of things is being developed, especially the vaccine, which has not yet come into play. But uh, there are other drugs that are on trial, but yet we have not reached cure. At the moment, there is no cure for HIV. However, there is treatment for HIV. And if an individual reach a viral suppressed level, he, the chances that he can transmit the disease is very, very low. And right now, as I'm talking to you, we have couples that all of them have achieved viral suppression and all their children that have even grown up to adult do not have the infection. So we are somewhere. 
But mm. in terms of treatment, we are still not there. Okay. But for now, is the, in, in terms of cure, sorry, we are not still there. But in terms of treatment, we have achieved a lot of uh, milestone. Okay. And uh, the virus suppression is the target at the moment. Okay, Dr. Omar, thank you so much for coming on our show this morning and sharing your thoughts. Uh, it was a very great pleasure having you. It's my pleasure too. Have a nice day. Yeah. Okay, we've been talking with Dr. Noura Omar, Chairman Young Doctors Affairs of Nigerian Medical Association. And uh, this is where we draw the curtain on today's uh, edition of The Breakfast. We hope to see you again tomorrow on the same show, uh, same time, which is 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock or 9.55. And uh, we're praying that you have a wonderful midweek. Until we meet again tomorrow, my name is Nyamgul. Agaji. Bye for now.